Hello and welcome! My name is Maya Joy and in today's video we are going to talk about the astrological houses of love and connection. My purpose in making this video is to give you information that you can utilize right away to understand your best pathway to establishing mutually supportive connections with other people that will help foster your sense of well-being and help everyone to thrive. In the natal chart, any house could potentially describe something about relationships, but there are three main relational houses. The first relational house is the fifth house. This is the relational house that I would affiliate with Tinder. <laughs> this is the relationship house that I would affiliate with those very, very sexy nights of romance. This is the house that is affiliated with dating, especially dating for pleasure, which has become more and more common in modern times. This is going out and having a good time together for the sake of having a good time together. Anything dating, anything that is fundamentally about sex, especially sex for pleasure, goes here. This describes like those two wonderful, luring individuals who are gonna meet up and go to a salsa dancing class and then they're gonna have a real great time, build some chemistry, and then go home together that night. That is the fifth house. If you wanna know whether a person's gonna have a good time and whether they're gonna enjoy fun and pleasure with others and whether they're going to have a really spicy sex life, you wanna actually look at that person's fifth house if you were wondering, should I try like online dating or meeting someone by getting involved in some kind of fun activity like joining an improv group or signing up for that tango lesson, if your fifth house has some real positive aspects, and we're gonna talk about what does it mean for a house to be positive at the end of the video, but if your fifth house is looking pretty good, then go out there and build connections with other people by having fun together and understand that you probably are a pretty sexy person <laughs> and you're probably pretty alluring and you're probably especially alluring when you're having a good time. So that's a little bit about the fifth house. In the 2020s, I see a lot of confusion amongst people where they're sort of mixing significations of the fifth house, our first relational house, and the seventh house, our second relational house, often thinking that fifth house activities, like meeting up with someone for a Tinder hookup, are going to lead to seventh house activities, like those real, wonderful, committed, one-on-one -on -one relationships. And this is not usually true. I would say in most cases, it's not, it's not true. The dating for pleasure is always something that has gone on. I think even, and I know we don't wanna talk about this, but in reality, like many men may have had a wife and a family and then they may have also had a mistress and that maybe that mistress was like a fifth house person and they were doing the fifth house things and then the man also maybe had seventh house activities and he had that sort of secure attachment with someone at home. Now I understand that wasn't every man or every circumstance but just to say there's a clear differentiation between that sort of interaction with another person or a group of people for the sake of fun and pleasure and enjoyment versus the seventh house, which describes a close one-on-one -on -one relationship with another person where both people agree, hey, you're special to me 
and what we have is special and I hope I'm special to you and like let's be in each other's lives for quite some time and learn and grow from one another. The seventh house, a close one-on-one -on -one relationship with another person where both people agree, hey, you're special to me and what we have is special and I hope I'm special to you and let's be in each other's lives for quite some time and learn and grow from one another. The seventh house shows marriage partners and I think if you see a personal planet in the seventh house that's a good indication that the person probably will get married but the seventh house also shows best friends and it also shows close business partnership. I've heard the seventh house described as the people you can count on one hand and I think that's usually true. So the seventh house may describe like your best friend, maybe someone in your family you're really close to, maybe someone that you're dating. Those very close, intimate, one-on-one -on -one relationships, whether romantic or not, it's sort of the pair bond house. Now also, the seventh house does describe other people in general and the type of people we attract to ourselves. But for the context of this video, seventh house is warm one-on-one -on -one relationships where both people are invested and consider the other one to be special and important in their life. The eleventh house! This is sort of like the house of like mixing and mingling. Like if somebody has a great eleventh house, you typically find that that person has a wide circle of friends. This is like our sense of belonging in a larger community of people who are kind of vibing as we're vibing. So 11th house shows more loose connections. People who have 11th house is a really good house. They come alive in groups of individuals no matter what they're doing. Like they could be joining together to volunteer together or it could be an office work party and they're just generally just really liked by others and they generally keep like a really wide circle. So the 11th house is where we find like our sense of belonging in groups, in organizations, in professional societies, our general popularity amongst our peers and where we fit in our community and for people with a vibrant 11th house, those sorts of activities where you can join together with others become really positive and favorable. One of the most positive of all of the houses. Every person's pathway to creating positive connections with other people is going to be different. To know which pathway is best for you, you may look just straight away, just look at your chart and see if one of these houses contains a really positive planet. So what would that be? Definitely if one of these houses contains Jupiter or Venus, and especially if you're born at night and one of these houses contains Venus, that's great. Or if you're born in the day and one of these houses contains Jupiter, that's going to be really great and really positive to focus on those house matters. Also positive could be if any one of these 5th, 7th, or 11th contains your sun or moon. Especially your sun if you were born uh, during the day and the moon if you were born at night. That also can show a great significance to that house area. If none of this is true, you can look at houses that are ruled by signs affiliated with favorable planets. So if one of these houses is ruled by Taurus or Libra, especially if you were born after dark, or is ruled by Pisces or Sagittarius ruled, if you were born during the day, then that would be considered a positive house as well. I highly recommend using whole sign houses. If your fifth house is looking good, go out there and wear your very best and be sexy and mix and mingle and have a good time and it's likely to lead to fulfilling connections. 
if your fifth house isn't looking so good, but maybe like, like me, maybe your moon's in the seventh house. Pay attention to those people you'd really like to get closer to and let them know how you feel. Remember those like friendship bracelets or like, oh, pinky swearing? When I was little, that was the totally a thing. Those kinds of agreements where it's like, okay, let's have a special connection together. That's your pathway if the seventh house is looking good. If it's the 11th house that's looking good, go join some groups, jump in, go to a meetup, gather together with people in a park, join a professional society. Think, where do I vibe? What are my hopes and dreams? And who's kind of going where I'm going? And let that be your pathway to a connection. So just for fun, I wanted to show my chart really quick and show you how easy this can be. So if you're looking at my chart, right away, if you look at the fifth house, you should get a no. Nope, that's not gonna be it. Why? Right where, wherever we see Saturn, that's a no. Like just a core signification, no. And that's been a no. Fifth house has always been a no. I don't even like games. Any hobby I've ever done has always felt like work. I'm not into fifth house, not good. And then you might look at seventh house. Whoa, okay, there's something different here. The moon is there and the north node, which is our growth and evolution. Okay, so that's not too bad. There's something there with one-on-one -on -one relationships that could be good. Also look at the seventh house, what sign rules it? Pisces. And remember we learned if it's Pisces or Sagittarius, that's affiliated with Jupiter, which is positive. So that's maybe positive for me. And then you might look at the 11th house and you see there's one thing there. And what is that thing? That's Chiron, which can be affiliated with extra sensitivity, but also means we might be attracting to ourselves those who are wounded, especially when it falls in the 11th house. Chiron, not so good. Saturn, not good. Moon, okay. So like for me, when it comes to establishing relationships, and this is how it's always been throughout my life as well, is one-on-one -on -one relationships have always been good. I've always been able to draw to myself best friends, always been able to have a relational partner. Those one-on-one -on -one relationships have been really good, but 11th house has been not so great and 5th house has been not good. It can be as simple as just looking at your chart in whole sign houses and just seeing which house is the best and kind of focusing there to build connection. If anybody could use a little bit of help implementing this method, I do offer some astrology readings, including currently a reading called Astrological Q&A with Psychic Insight, where you can dive deeper into your chart. But I hope everyone learned something today, and I hope that you now understand for you or for your loved ones what might be the best ways to cultivate love and connection in your life because I really want you all to thrive on your journeys and feel supported and harvest the benefits of connection with other people. So thank you so much. Thank you for watching. Many blessings and namaste.